Now we can update the save and load game functions. Originally I had some versioning in there so that we would have the ability to automatically update the save game files as we release new versions. I'm going to remove that for now because we may do a lot of changes and I don't want to spend half the lessons just cleaning up updating the save and load game functions. So for now we're just removing the versioning, removing some of the testing, and we're going to get the game back so we can save and load just the current game with the current structure. We'll start by opening up the solution and editing the engine project services save game service. First thing we need to do is up at the top we need to add a using directive for system collections generic and then we need to go through and uncomment out all the lines we had commented before. In particular the load last save or create new and the first change I'm going to do is if the file didn't exist we used to create just a, a new empty game session with the default player now we're going to throw a new file not found exception and we'll do the same thing if there was any exception parsing down here on line 43 if there was an error we're just going to throw an exception we no longer want to start the game with an empty player because a player has to have a name and has to have the attributes populated. Next we have the create player function that starts on line 54 now and take out the code that was checking for the version number since we're not going to deal with versions for now and we're going to replace where we used to populate the dexterity property we now have to populate the player attributes and we're going to use this get player attributes function that looks at the JSON data from the save game file and builds the player and that's going to be the next function we write which is down here on line 66 and one final thing to remember is we had previously changed the last line of the create player function to return null so now you need to delete the return null and replace it with a return player since we're actually populating a, pl a player now and the get player attributes function is just going to create an attributes list move through the JSON data we're going to look at the current player attributes and we're going to build a list of the player attributes from the JSON data the key display name dice notation base value and modified value and we're going to return that in the populate player inventory populate player quests and populate player recipe functions just remove the code that used to look at the version number uh, since we're just going to deal with the one version number for now and then the final thing in this class we used to have a file version function at the end of the class again we can get rid of that we'll worry about file versioning in the future next we'll go into the WPF UI project and we're going to modify the main window.xaml and main window.xaml.cs we'll start with the main window.xaml.cs and the first change we need to make is in the main window constructor on line 27 we need to have two parameters to take in the X location and the Y location since the save game detail has the player data plus the location they're currently at and if you notice we have these int X location equals 0 int Y location equals 0 so that makes them uh, optional parameters if you don't pass in an X location and a Y location it will default to 0 0 which we can do for the start of a, a brand new game the player will just start at location 0 0 and we use those parameters when we instantiate a new game session object here on line 33 when we pass in the player that was passed in the main window with the starting X and Y location next we'll change some of the behavior of the menu options and we'll go to the start new game function on line 140 what it's going to do now is when we do start new game we're going to instantiate a startup window and show it and close this main window this way if uh, if the player wants to start a new game whether it's creating a new character or loading a character from a save game we're going to do all of that through the startup window which means we can delete the load game on click on click function which used to be at line 145 that's now all handled through the startup window in the main window on closing function down here in line 157 
I uh, used to have all this code here for popping up the message saying, do you want to save your game before you know, we close? And if so, if they clicked yes, then we'd call the save game function. I moved this out of the main window on closing into its own function. Uh, something I want to do in the future is uh, an is dirty check. So if the player loads a game and doesn't do anything, then the game is not dirty. Nothing's changed. So we don't need to ask if they want to save the game because it's the same game they loaded in. But if the player moves or if they fight or if they build something, uh, their inventory changes, then the player is dirty or the game is dirty. So we're going to want to pop up the do you want to save your game message. Uh, that's something we're going to do in the future. This is just kind of preparing for that. This way we'll have the ability to have everything go through this ask to save game function, whether it's opening a new game and asking them if they want to save their current game or if it's closing the game, uh, we'll have it all centralized here and this is where we'll check to see if it's dirty and if we need to ask. And then finally in the save game function down here at the end, I uncommented line 186 where we had save game service dot save which we temporarily commented out since we broke the save game functionality. Uh, so now we need to uncomment it so we can actually save the game. Then we'll go into main window.xaml and in our menu up here at the top uh, from lines 31 through 51, uh, we're going to take out the is enabled equals falses that we had on some of these menu items. And we're going to delete the load game menu item since that's all now all handled by this start new game, it'll pop up that startup that lets them create a new player or load a game. And I changed the text here on line 36 from start new game to just new game. Then we'll go into the WPF UI startup.xaml and startup.xaml.cs. We'll start out with the startup.xaml.cs. Uh, this is now going to have a new button for loading a game. So we need to, of course, we need a, a function to handle that. We have some changes to the using directives, uh, especially now the Microsoft.win32, since now if the player clicks the load game button, we need to pop up a open file dialog box, and that's in the Microsoft Win32 namespace. So set your using directives to match what we have here in the first five lines. Then on line 11, I set a constant here for the save game file extension, SOSCSRPG. We're going to use that later, and I'd rather have that as a constant up here. And we used to have a backing variable for the game details. And in the startup constructor, we used to say uh, game detail service read game details, and we'd store that in underscore game details, which we then set to data context. That was the only place we used that underscore game details variable. So I just got rid of it and now I just say read the game details and put it right into the data context. Our new function to load a game from disk is on lines 27 through 49. So this is the click event handler for the new button we're going to add. And it opens up an open file dialog box, sets the save games filter, the files it's going to look for to our save game file extension, the SOS CS RBG we have up here shows the dialogue, lets the player, and if the player does select true, and just remember this is double equals true. I'm using a, a font here that, that uh, does ligatures. So uh, this is a double equal, it's not just a single equal. So if the player does click on a file, then we're going to try to load it into the, a game session object, and then we're going to create a new main window, the game window, passing in the game session's current player and the X and Y coordinates. Those two new parameters that we put in to main windows constructor so we can start out the game at a specific location. Then we're going to show the main window and we're going to close this startup window. And that's all we have for the startup.xaml.cs. Now in startup.xaml, since we're adding a new button, we needed to add a new row, just set the height to auto. And I put it here in the middle, so I moved the exit button down one. Uh, row zero is our start new game. 
row one of our grid is the load saved game, which calls our new load saved game on click event. And then row two is our exit like it was before. And also for the buttons, I changed start new game so that new and game were lowercase letters. Uh, this looks a little bit cleaner to me. Uh, personal preference doesn't really matter. You can have it say whatever you want. And the final step was to go into the test engine project. In the services, I deleted the test save game service class. And in the test engine test files saved games, I deleted the old game 01000 SOSC SRPG file. Since we're not testing with versioning anymore, we don't need that in there for right now. Uh, but I did add the task to the project plan here. Uh, Re-add saved game file versioning automatic upgrading. So this way you don't forget about it. Now let's play the game. We'll start it. I'll start a new game and I'll call the character ABC. Move them to the north. Have them fight a snake so that we change their inventory. And uh, we'll use a granola bar. Our hit points have dropped a little bit, so we'll try File, Save Game, and we'll call it ABC. Now let's exit, and if we load that save game, then we should have eight hit points for player ABC. Uh, they should have 13 gold, and they should be at the Herbalist Garden. So let's exit. Restart the game, load a saved game, and here is player ABC, 8 hit points, 13 gold, and at the Herbalist Garden again. So it looks like the save and load worked. Now let's try a new game, and we will call this XYZ, and now XYZ is in there. So I think we're good. The next thing I want to do is convert this to .NET 5. Uh, .NET 5 is now officially supported by Microsoft. It's a new release and it's also, uh, it's also available on Linux and Mac. So I'd like to make it so we can create games and hand them out to our friends that may have a Linux or a Mac computer and let them play them. Uh, also .NET 5 is the new direction for Microsoft. They're not really going to be upgrading .NET Framework or .NET Core much longer, uh, other than probably you know, major security patches if there's a security hole. So I'd like to make sure we have something that we can use for the future. Fortunately, Microsoft and Amazon have tools to upgrade .NET Framework projects to .NET 5. Uh, they want to do that because everything on the cloud, uh, if you have .NET 5, now you can move some of your projects to the cloud and they'll run on either a Windows environment or in a Linux environment. Uh, hopefully, they, the update will be easy. I've heard from someone that they actually developed this in .NET 5 from the beginning and all the code has been working for them. Uh, I think all that we'll need to do is change the uh, get the solution file updated, the project files updated, and maybe some versions of some NuGet packages, and hopefully that all works smoothly, but we shall see. In the meantime, as always, if you're watching the video on YouTube, there's links to the support page, the source code, the project files, everything. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them underneath the video on YouTube or on the support page and I will get back to you as soon as possible.